welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Jessica Staley and here are today's headlines. Homeless but not helpless this Christmas time in Winchester. A university student refusing to be held back by scoliosis. And Hampshire's very own Olympian gears up for the upcoming Winter Games. Sleeping rough this Christmas isn't something anyone would wish for, but it's the reality for an increasing number of people in Winchester. Joseph Lyons went to speak to those suffering and a charity that's trying to help. For many, the festive period is a time of warmth, family and a full stomach. However, there are members of our community that dread Christmas. Some associate it with long, cold nights on the streets of Winchester. Nationally, homelessness has been dramatically increasing over the last seven years. In contrast, the amount of rough sleepers in Winchester has seen a significant dip since 2014. However, Lucy Tennant, a representative of Trinity, says it is definitely rising this year. Last month, we were seeing 40 people a day, but we saw 60 people one day last week. Charities such as Trinity provide a wide range of services to support people suffering from homelessness. It's a place where people can get out of the cold and can help them get back on their feet. They had over 11,000 visits last year and served 14,300 hot meals. So at Trinity we run a wide range of services for homeless and vulnerable people. The main ones are our drop-in centre, uh, people can get food, um, access to free clothing, they can wash themselves or their laundry. Um, we do healthcare on site so people can see a doctor or a nurse. So we do art classes, gardening groups. We also run a separate women's service um, which works with primarily with victims of domestic abuse. Um, so we run counselling and then peer support groups as well, so how to move on um, into who you are and who you're meant to be. Trinity basically is my life. If I didn't come to Trinity, I'd be back into doing what I used to do. And yeah, I used to be on heroin and crack and spice really big. Recently I got into the heroin as well, but obviously I've sort of like been about three months clean now off the heroin, so if it weren't for her, I'd probably be back out for sleeping in doorways, begging. Yeah trying to get the money together to get me next hit. So if it wasn't for this place, then yeah, I'd probably be the same as Georgie out there doing whatever. Does, yeah. does Trinity provide any help for getting clean? Yeah, yeah they've got counselling and... Got they counselling, they've got women's group, mm. they've got yeah. art, mindfulness, yeah. I've been around a few towns and I've gone to a few like places like this and there's not one like this, this is it. Although homelessness is on the rise, Trinity and other charities in the area provides some respite for the harsh realities of sleeping rough this winter. Joseph Lyons, Winchester News Online. A recent study has made us ask, is university worth it? The study revealed that a large number of former students felt their efforts were a waste of time. So why did they feel that and what does it mean for the rest of us? Naomi Collins reports. For many, university is the first taste of independence. Socialising, studying, alongside aiming for a degree and a bright future. However, a recent study by AbleSkills says otherwise. According to AbleSkills' recent study, 30% of graduates in the South East say their degree was pointless, while 35% nationwide said they wished they didn't come to university at all. It's a worrying number. It's relatively high, but I think it comes from a variety of factors. And you do kind of get that opinion from students who are here as well and who graduate. I think you have students who come here and they will perhaps do their degree and nothing else externally. They won't kind of bring in the university experience as well. And I think perhaps if you spend the money and the time and kind of sort of three, four years out of your life being a student and then you haven't done anything else and then you leave and you perhaps don't get the job that you thought you were going to get or you go home after uni, I can see how that opinion could perhaps come out. Um, I think just having a degree isn't enough anymore where it's so there are so many different degrees you can do so many places you can do it it doesn't it doesn't do well just to have the degree and just to pass it you should be doing kind of like extracurricular stuff despite able skills findings 49 percent of students are still going on to advanced education and here at winchester there's plans to expand by over 3,000 by 2025 naomi collins winchester news online 75% of women want to be more active, according to Sport England's This Girl Can campaign. With the University of Winchester running its own This Girl Can week, Emily Mee looks at how rugby is getting girls involved. Hello, hey! <laughs> 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 
smashing stereotypes and pushing boundaries. Meet the girls who are proving that rugby isn't just for men. It may be more rough and tumble than your average sport, but this doesn't stop the University of Winchester women's rugby team. The university is running its own week in support of This Girl Can, a campaign encouraging more women to get involved in sport. Sport England says that only a third of women play even 30 minutes of sport a week, in comparison to 40% of men. Last year's women's rugby captain, who was crowned the university's Sportswoman of the Year, says that sport is for everyone. It should be an equal playing field. No stereotypes. You're literally there to play your sport, and you're there to do good in your sport. And it shouldn't matter what gender you are. It shouldn't matter what the stereotypes are. You're there to play that game that you love. And people shouldn't be quick to assume or quick to judge anything. The women's rugby team is keen to show that people shouldn't judge the sport by its stereotype. Yeah, there is an stereotype. I think it's important that we show rugby as just a neutral sport. That doesn't have a stereotype. It's sport rugby is for all sizes and shapes. Okay? So it's really important that we go forward and say, right, you want to play rugby, have a go. Okay, you might not be the best at it, but you could be, and it's important to just give it a go. To see a girl who is tiny have the confidence and the strength to take down someone massive is amazing. And there's generally a stereotype around rugby that it's a rough game, it's a boys game, but anyone can play it. I, I don't believe in the stereotype of boys and girls, like this is specifically for boys, this is specifically for girls. I think anyone can do whatever they want. And if a girl wants to get out on the pitch and smash people and run down the field and score a bunch of tries, then that's cool. Not only does it provide exercise and empowerment for women, but also the opportunity to be part of a team. I came to uni, um, never played rugby before, literally went to the welcome drinks and the girls made me feel so welcome. And now I've got a family of sisters and if I'm ever in trouble, if I ever need anything, especially sport with uni work, I know they're always there for me. With around two million fewer women playing sport than men, getting more women involved in rugby could be a way to tackle the problem. Emily Mee, Winchester News Online. <laughs> Those girls certainly can, and here's another one who has learnt how to tackle challenges. But for Zoe Wilcox, achieving her own particular goal, which was to become an actress, meant overcoming some incredible difficulties. Our reporter Jennifer Correa Marchbank has been to see her. I just love the wrist stinking bird, the wrist like what's great by a vicious dog. For you, all you have. It's something that affects one in 2,000 people and has the potential to devastate lives. It's a deformity which requires surgery to uncurl the spine, and the procedure can take five to six hours. Our very own Winchester drama student Zoe Wilcox also had to undergo the treatment. It's just kind of felt kind of limiting because I felt like I couldn't really do anything. I felt a bit left out, so I couldn't really be like a kid. I felt a bit like a grandma. I was like, oh, we're back. I feel so I feel so relieved that I've had it done because, like, if I still had my scoliosis, I wouldn't be able to do like three hours workshop. I, I just kind of feel like I wouldn't have the confidence to go out and perform. I'd worry beforehand whether something would happen and my back would go funny or I, it's just kind of completely eliminated the worry now. And my friends are a bit like, careful, she's got rods in her back. But I'm like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I've got this. Zoe was a just fantastic patient to look after. She shows, for me, the real um, power of this sort of surgery is that a patient that wants to do well puts the motivation into getting recovered and getting back to activity are the people that do the best. When I see patients sort of three months after they've had this done, they're often a completely different person, far more outgoing. And for me, that's why we do this sort of thing. It's just um, life-changing for the majority of people. You don't ever want to see your children in pain. The worst bit for me was leaving her in the anaesthetic room when she went to sleep. The last thing she said to me was, I'm scared. <laughs> she just was determined that she was going to get in, get home, get back to college, 
and um, audition for Legally Blonde and that was her whole motivation was I'm, I'm going to get better and that's what I want to do. Oh, I'm so proud of her, so proud of her. And she, she, I think she grew up hugely having to deal with it um, and it's been quite hard letting go <laughs> and been quite hard for her I think sort of learning to cope with stuff on her own but um, I think she'll do brilliantly. I think. The treatment for scoliosis has developed vastly but there's still much room for improvement. The future hopes is that research will allow for early intervention and growth control, meaning that there is no need for such radical surgeries, meaning that people like Zoe get help earlier on in life. This is Jennifer Crow Marchbank, Winchester News Online. And now we go to Peter Murphy in the newsroom. Thanks, Jess. And now. Winchester University's Food Hall won twice at the Free From Eating Out Awards. They were one of five finalists for the main overall award. Judges commended tasty, sustainably sourced food, which they said was impressive for a mass catering establishment. Winchester City Council has highlighted the area around Winchester Railway Station for possible redevelopment. Areas including the cattle market and car fax sites were outlined in a plan to revitalise and develop the commercial and residential offering in the area. The council said their goal is to create a fitting gateway to the city. Hampshire County Council has launched an initiative to help people reduce their waste. The County Council is inviting applications from organisations for up to £5,000 to support them in delivering products, projects and services which minimise or eliminate household waste. The Council claims local authorities in Hampshire spend £100 million each year dealing with the county's waste. And now, back to the studio. The approach to mental health is frequently formal and clinical but one inspirational woman hopes to change this. Amber Lovell found out more. I think people should talk more, people should do more stuff like this um, and share their stories. That's awareness for me. Everyone's got a story, everyone's got a past and everyone's got issues. Whichever it is, sharing with other people is the way forward, I think, and that's to create awareness. According to mental health charity Mind, approximately one in four people in the UK will experience a mental health condition at least once in their lifetime. One Bournemouth mum is doing something about this. And then I thought to myself, I'm going to start a website to help other women with anxiety. So that's where PS You're Beautiful started, with the little logo and everything. PS You're Beautiful is a platform where mum of one, Abby, encourages people to share their mental health experiences. Abby also believes there is not enough support for those with poor mental health. I mean, we're talking about it a lot more now because a lot more celebrities are getting, you know, are actually talking about their mental illness. I think they either target youngsters or they target a specific area within the mental illness but I think people should talk more people should do more stuff like this. Abby also shares her goals for the future. Um, I would definitely love to um, make a, a paper magazine I'd like to see it next to Spirit and Destiny in WH Smith that'd be amazing for me <coughs> and I'd also like to um, expand it to a retreat for women who suffer with anxiety and depression to come and do vision board workshops, holistic healing, all that kind of stuff. Little pods in trees and oh, I'd, I'd love it. Amber Lovell, Winchester News Online, Bournemouth. Jane Austen, literary heroine and internationally recognised author. After the effect she's had on readers and writers alike, it's only fitting that a book be released in her honour. Jane Austen's England, A Walking Guide, takes a look at Jane's life and what inspired her. Our lifestyle reporter, Adriana Jade Webb, has the story. Isn't it amazing and remarkable that an obscure vicar's daughter in a vicarage buried in the heart of Hampshire countryside should have become internationally recognised as one of the world's greatest writers? Jane Austen, vicar's daughter turned famous writer. Jane Austen has had a remarkable effect on the world of literature with her renowned work. Two weeks ago, a book was launched in her honour at the Conco Club. At the event this week, the mayor spoke about his love of literature. Without literature, life is pretty, pretty meaningless. Author Anne-Marie Edwards spoke about Jane's qualities as a writer and a person and what she felt this has brought to Jane's writing. I think that her great gift was her tremendous ability to create people. Well, I stopped teaching, and I'd been teaching Jane Austen quite a lot, and I found classes loved them, loved her novels, 
And when I came to Hampshire, I realized I had a golden opportunity to walk in her footsteps and see what remains today. And it was a wonderful experience, there's so much. I had a book, and the walks were wonderful, and they were really in Jane's footsteps. And I think, uh, you know, I was really delighted and thrilled. Jane Austen's England, a walking guide, has had continuous success since its launch. Now, readers can hope to find an insight into Jane's life or learn more about her. This is Adriana Jade Webb with Just News Online. Just weeks after the latest Marvel comic book to film adaptation broke the box office, a new comic book store has opened in Winchester. Chahat Kalra has more. Tales to astonish, daring deeds and colourful characters. Here at CGC Emporium, there is a lot for readers to enjoy. This, it's kind of, as you can see, we have these tables here and stuff like that. It's a good environment where you can sit down and relax and be with the community, really. I mean, that's, that's sort of our goal, is to kind of get a, a board gaming, card, comic book community. Where, um, and the coffee is a you know, big part of that. You sit down, you have a nice coffee, cup of tea uh, with your friends, play some board games. And, uh, yeah. From comics and games to pop figures and plushies, the business aims to provide a space where everyone can come together to meet fellow fans of all things geeky. It's, it's got a lot more range than I thought it would have, and it's nice. It's lovely and compact, it's nice and cosy. It's like a real board game store for by people who like board games, for people who like board games. <laughs> comics, games and coffee, there's something for everyone. Attracting people of all ages and interests, CGC Emporium is bringing together the people of Winchester. This is Charlotte Kolarov with Winchester News Online. And now from superhuman feats on the page to superhuman feats on the ice, here's Johnny Leck with the sport. Thanks Jeff. Well you join me here at one of many of the University of Winchester's sports fields where sometimes an unusual and unique sport takes place, but more on that in a little while. First now, with the Winter Olympics just around the corner, only 72 days in fact, our sports reporter Mike Key decided to catch up with Southampton's very own Winter Olympian, Billy Morgan, to get his thoughts on his competition in the Big Air event category. There's so many kids now that are, that are really good. And there's obviously all the, kind of the guys that have been there for ages. Um, Chris Cornyn, the young American kid, he's... Uh, he's pro he's got to be a dead set for for a medal. So that kind of goes to show you got like Mark McMorris, who's been the best for years, and there's just some young, eighteen, nineteen year old kid that's come out of nowhere. And I'm, there's more. You know, there's the Norwegians, and it's it, it's anyone's game. But I think that's what makes snowboarding so interesting. You know, you you know Usain Bolt's going to win hundred meters. It's kind of a dead set. As a, you know, it's still awesome to watch, but with snowboarding it's such a gamble you know so anyone can fall on the day and if somebody wants to just try their, their hardest tricks they might land them and then they'll do really well but that's that's what I think makes it really exciting to watch would you put yourself in the, me um, in the midst of the next Olympics do you reckon or? I hope I hope so it depends how my training goes in the next few months um, if you'd have asked me like six months ago I'd have said probably not but that the new trick I learned in um, in Sasfe the front side triple opens up like another door for me to do, to use that trick in my slope style run and potentially big air because it's quite a high scoring trick. Um, so yeah, providing I can get more reps done on that trick to make it more consistent, my chances I think are a little bit, a little bit better now. Now keeping with the winter theme, let's go to Planet Ice in Basingstoke and it was derby night for the Bison as they took a 6-1 win over fierce rivals Bracknell Bees in the National Cup. Dan Anderson has more on what proved to be a very feisty game. Roman Malanik has been in superb form recently and his run went on with this opener. Soon after, Dan Scott stung the bees with this thunderbolt on a power play. The floodgates were to open soon after, with Thomas Karpov and Scott scoring from contrasting ranges. Oh. Alan Wilson completed the extermination with his second and the team's sixth.
We caught up with coach Doug Shepard after the game. Yeah, I thought we played really well tonight. Uh, we've been playing well for three weeks, wanted to keep things going, only one game this weekend. You know, we played a real solid six minutes. Yeah, I mean, Dogger Knights can, can get like that, uh, especially when the score lined out what it was. They've uh, obviously frustrated, lost a few in a row. Um, but I thought our guys uh, handled it the right way and then played hard throughout. And finally, we decided to catch up with one of the University of Winchester's many sports societies. And while they may not be able to take to the sky just yet, this year the Quidditch Society are certainly trying to hit the ground running. Rob Stone has more. Quidditch, a sport derived from J.K. Rowling's masterpiece. The wizarding world of Harry Potter meets Winchester University as fans try to take the novelised sport into the real world. When people ask me what it is, I always tell them it's like a love child of um, dodgeball, netball, hag rugby for snitching, and rugby, because it is a full contact sport. Um, and the way that they've um, adapted it is that you run the entire game with a broom with a stick between your legs. Uh. <laughs> now the real world might not have a flying golden snitch just yet, so improvisation is required in some areas. Savannah is our seeker, so those are yellow. Um, I'm currently wearing a white headband, which is chaser. Yep. The keeper will be wearing a green one, and the beaters will be wearing black. It is a full sport, so trying to convince people, sporty people, that it's something they should try out, and then also having people like big Harry Potter fans come in and not expect it to be an actual sport. Yeah. So we've They're got to find some different. people that are kind of in the middle there. Finding that balance could be key, as although it's only the first year that the society has been running, they're hoping to take flight. So we kind of got contacted by someone who was like, oh, if you guys want to set it up, that's how you can do it, we'll help you, here's the rules, here's what you need to do. Last year they had a World Cup, there was one in Norway, and they had a few teams like Spain, UK, France, Norway, Sweden, so it's growing. With Quidditch becoming more of a real-world sport, and less of a fantasy, be sure to keep your eye on the sky. Robert Stone, Winchester News Online. Well, that's all for sport this year. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. And finally, mince pies, mulled wine and festive fun. Once again, the eyes of Winchester are firmly focused on the Christmas market, which is now underway by the cathedral. It's a vitally, it's a vitally important part of the city's seasonal economy, and Matilda Appleyard has been along to see what's on offer. Winter is the perfect time to indulge in all things naughty and nice. At the Winchester Christmas Market, you can get anything from spiced nuts to mulled mead. This is one of the best Christmas markets, we think one of the best Christmas markets in Britain. And it's, uh, it's fantastic to deal with the cathedral, the customers are great. The market has always been integral to vendors, and this year promised to be just as popular. Is it? It's quite nice. It's jolly. It's jolly. <laughs> Sugar and spice and everything nice, that's what Winchester Christmas Market is made of. I'm Matilda Appleyard, Winchester News Online. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Winchester News Online.